Shalom, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Leviticus study. Um, we're now in chapter five. We've been going through all of the offerings. Um, and we looked at uh, the burnt offering. Um, we saw how it was a dedication of oneself. Um, that combined with the meal offering, which is the grain offering, the consecration, those two together signify commitment. Um, we looked at communion um, and the peace offering, salvation. We looked at sin offering, which is part of cleansing, which coincides and marries to trespass, which we'll be covering today. Um, but before we get started in chapter five, I wanted to kind of um, give clarity to something we were discussing two weeks ago. Um, uh, Elder Jadiel and myself were discussing verse 27 of chapter 4 where it says if any one of the common people sins unintentionally so we were we were looking into what um, common meant in this context and one of the things we both did together is we looked at verse 1 and 2 where it says chapter 4 it says now Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying if the children uh, speak to the children of Israel, saying, if a person sins unintentionally. Um, so when he says a person here, he's speaking to the whole of the congregation. Then he starts to clarify what each person is in the form of their title. So he talks about the priests. He talks about the congregation. He talks about the rulers. So he's breaking it, it down in classification. So when he gets to verse 27 and he says common people, what he's saying is all of the people that weren't covered under what I already said, these are the rest of the children of Israel. This is what they must do. So just wanted to clarify that before we um, move forward because we said we would look into that um, and um, we did. So that's, that's what we have and that's within the context common means those that aren't covered by what I said to the priest, those that aren't covered by what I said to the whole of the congregation, those that weren't covered um, under what I said to the rulers, these are the rest of the people, this is what you must do. So I uh, just wanted you guys to see that as we were able to see that and the Father revealed it to us in scripture. So, um, we're now in chapter five, uh, the trespass offering and, and how how much it marries to the message from this morning. Like, as we go through, you guys are gonna see like, Rick could have just taught Leviticus chapter five. <laughs> you know, really, um, because it is the foundation of understanding uh, repentance. It is the, under, the, 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 the foundation of understanding confession. It is, the, it is the foundation of understanding how the Father then, after confession, after repentance, then forgives us, right? By our sacrifice. So, um, and, and of course, Yahushua representing that sacrifice as he died and took all of our sin on force. Um, so we'll see those things come alive um, as he presents them to us in the instructions here in Leviticus chapter 5. So, We'll kind of break this down um, uh, as we read through. Let's do this. Let's uh, let's read the first seven verses. Then we'll kind of discuss them. Um, and, and, and for all the newcomers, how we do it is whoever offers to read, they then get the first opportunity to, 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 to express what they see. Um, and what the Father's saying them through the verses that we covered. Then we go through uh, verse by verse to make sure we get a full understanding of, of the verses. So who would like to begin? Um, I know, JP, you got to leave, so you want to read first? My brother? 
JP, JP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let me get my, let me see my scriptures that I don't know where they went. Can't find your scriptures on your back. What the? What? <laughs> Hey, we're moving around here. We're moving around here, man. Ready? You want me to read it for you? <laughs> Go ahead. Where, where we at? Leviticus? What you said? Oh, you don't even know where we're at. Oh, brother. <laughs> yeah, Leviticus chapter five. <laughs> All right. You said the first seven verses, right? Yeah, first seven. All right. He says, and if a soul, sh if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing. And as a witness, whether he has seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of an unclean cattle or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touch the uncleanliness of, a, of man, whatsoever uncleanliness, it be that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be hid from him. When he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. Or if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him. When he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. And it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. And he shall bring his trespass of offering unto Yahuwah for his sin, which he had sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goat, for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass, which he had committed, two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto Yahuwah, one for a sin offering and the other for a burn offering. Hallelujah. Um, you know, in, in this section, I've, I've heard a lot of, um, you know, when it comes to to people like, they, they bring out this, the fact that in verse 6, he says, he shall bring a female from the flock. And and they always bring that up to say about Yahusha. Um, you know, of course, he was a man, so he wasn't a female. So they're saying, like, well, how did that work out? And how did that play out? So I don't know if you heard anything like that before um, that you could speak on that. Because that would be the only thing I would really want to ask on this. Well, I mean, I, I don't, um, I don't, I don't know if I understand the connection that they're, they're making to you, Yeshua, um, as far as the female goes. But from what I understand and from what we've been reading. There was a there was a value to the male uh, uh, animal because it, it it was more valuable to the owner. Um, females were they were a little bit less valuable. That way, it was inviting all to be able to get to to be able to sacrifice, even down to the way where it, it, it mentions a, a lamb and then turtle doves for those that that were unable to. Um, but I'm not exactly sure of the connection you were making or they're making when it comes to Yahushua and the female. Um, Johnny L's got his hand raised. He might be able to expound on that a little bit better. Um, when, when JP said that, it reminded me of, of, the, of the meaning of the word daughter, you know, um, bot, right? So bot means um, it, it's referring to uh, the continuing, you know, because bat, uh, bet, or the house of the covenant, bat and uh, ben, uh, no, sorry, bet and tav. There we go. So bet and tav, and then you have ben, which is sun, which is bet and noon. And uh, what usually happens is that the female is usually con connecting two people within a covenant, so two families. So the, the daughter usually connects two families into a covenant. Uh, the family of the one marrying the woman and the, and the father, the, the father of the daughter's family are connecting by the daughter being given to the man. And and the word daughter shows that the woman or the, or the female connects uh, the relationship of the covenant together, right? 
So I'm thinking, you know, that this is why it connects so much to Yahushua because Yahushua is the one that's bringing us to to Yah and connecting us in a covenant, just as a daughter would connect two families in a covenant. You know, so I'm just I'm just looking at the significance of of a of a woman's position is it very you know it, it represents what Yahushua is doing with with uh, Israel and Yah him being in between Israel and Yah bringing the two together you know that just that just popped in my mind when when you're looking at a, a female when when you emphasize a female I'm not sh I'm not sure if that's necessarily it but I do see uh Bat and Ben being two different significance one to continue to see and one to to bring the house of the covenant together, you know, so. Hmm, interesting. Hallelujah. Very good, very good. Um, Sister Robbie. Okay, I'm unmuted. Yes, I have that same. You're muted again, sister. You muted yourself, Sister Robbie. You, you muted yourself. Okay, I'm, I'm, can you hear me now? There Sorry. Yeah, I have the same questions with the first um, verses in Leviticus chapter 5 as to why was it a female lamb? So I'm glad that Brother Jadiel, you know, had some commentary about that. Also, I was thinking that in the scriptures, it... Uh, has what like a non-gender thing going on like you know it refers to the book of proverbs talking about wisdom talks about it as a female person but it's actually just the qualities or the characteristics because we know that uh it's not a actual female it's just you know what i'm trying to say express Absolutely. certain qualities but it's it's non-gender so the second, because we know that Yahusha was a male he, lamb, he wasn't a female lamb. But still, he could represent combining the covenants together, like what Jadi was bringing out. If that makes any sense, how I'm trying to explain it. Absolutely, you're 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 um you're you're evaluating that by using the analogy of proverbs, which is a very good analogy because that same in that same passage, people often get goofy with the meanings of that you know, all kinds of weird stuff comes out of the female aspect. Um, so they start calling the, the, the Holy Spirit a female and all these other crazy things. When um, the assessment of that is that it's showing the characteristics of Yah. You know, he's he's the father of us all, right? Um, so, but no, those, those are those are good, um, good points. Um, what Johnny L brought out, I never even considered in looking at it. Um, because I see, you know, in a lot of the passages, it is going uh, in 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 a, in a, in an order of what is most valuable as well. Um, um, the male being the most to the farmer, to the one that is taking care of the land. The females being less valuable. Not not that the females aren't valuable, but the male is what brings the seed to create. The rest, the female, seem to be more come 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 much easier um, in that time to to the owner of the flock. So um, I think that plays into it as well. But I, but what was brought out, I think, is a very very powerful um, view that we should look at when we read these passages. Um, Yahushua being the ultimate sacrifice for us. Praise God. Um, I think I, I think. I confirm with both of you guys because I know that um, in the ancient times the uh, the males were for like rulers and uh, you know the established where the uh, the females were used for the common people because of the value aspect I believe what you were talking about brother Rod but that is interesting what uh, brother Gadiel brought out that aspect of it, the connection which I can see that linkage there too as well so. You know, I think it encompasses all of that. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. I wanted to look more into and in, also into um, what is being said. In uh, hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, no problem, brother. 
wanted to look more into what is being said in the first verse, though, because it says, if a person sins in hearing the utterance of an oath and is witness, whether he has seen or known of the matter, if he does not tell it, he bears guilt. So so who would like to, to take a stab at, at, at that? Um, I want to share a few scriptures um, that ties into that, but I want to hear what you what you have to say, um, because this is this this is the point of of the passage, um, and because we talked about what 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 will be sacrificed, but what are we sacrificing for? You know, this utterance of an oath, Jadiel. Yeah, um, so I, I wanted to mention real quick. Um, you know, we're talking about the value. The value, I think when we look at a scripture value, it's not saying that something is insignificant or not important or doesn't have any value. Yahushua said, the father is greater than I. That doesn't take away the value of the son. You see, you see what I'm saying? The value of him in salvation. You know, So when you're looking at the male and female sacrifice, because one is for a specific purpose and the other one is for another purpose, doesn't take away the value of each one. You know, and, uh, and a lot of people look at pigs, right? They look at pigs like there's no value, but y'all created it to clean the earth. <laughs> That's a, we need that. It's a, it, it has a value, you know, um, because it has a function. Um, but he, the pig would never be used to, to, to become a, a figure of, of a sacrifice to remove sin. You know, but. I know the uh, I, I, the verses that I, I believe you're going to go to is in Ezekiel. Am, am I correct? Because I don't want to go there if you're going to go there, uh, Brother Rob, when it comes to bearing the, the guilt. Um, oh, no. Yeah. No, nah, actually, actually, I'm, I was going to go to Proverbs and then go to Matthew. But no, nah, share the Ezekiel oh. passage. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, that's good. All right. So Ezekiel, um, I believe it's Ezekiel 18. Uh, it talks a little bit about our responsibility, our responsibility as when we're when we're being our brother's keeper. I think this is a part of the being our brother's keeper understanding. I think a lot of times we, we don't really understand what that means. Um, but being our brother's keeper in Ezekiel 18, we'll see. Ezekiel 18. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I'm going to have to come back and find it. I, I think it's in his... I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to have to come back. Yeah. Oh, no problem, brother. Sound like there's a there's a there's a children's ministry going on. They singing praises to y'all over there. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So so I wanted to look at a couple passages. Uh, so when it comes to oath, uh, just to give you guys an, an idea here, Proverbs twenty nine twenty four says this. It says, "Whoever is partner with a thief hates his own life." He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. So there, there is an omission here of not telling the truth when you know what the thief has done. This is speaking judicially. To keep your mouth shut is still a sin because you know the truth and you're not revealing it. Um, uh, another uh, idea of this oath uh, we see in Matthew when it comes to Peter. Now, it's a little different than this, but it's still an oath here. Um, I wanted to look at Matthew chapter 26. And you, you guys are all familiar with this passage. Um, <clears throat> I'll start in verse 69. <clears throat> Um, actually, I'm going to start in, 
verse 31 because there, there, there's a, there's a prediction by Yahushua here after Peter takes this oath. Um, he says in verse 31, then Yahushua said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been risen, I will go before you to Galilee. Check this. Peter says, Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Yahushua said to him, assuredly, I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three, three times. Peter said unto him, even I, if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples, right? So further on in the chapter, Yahushua is, is, is captured. And in verse 69 is where we'll pick it up. It says this, now Peter sat outside of the courtyard and a servant girl came to him saying, you also were with Yahushua of Galilee. But he denied it before them all saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, this fellow also was with Yahushua of Nazareth. But again, he denied with an oath, right? This is, this is with an oath. He swears something here. He says, I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by, who stood by, came up and said to Peter, surely you are also one of them for your speech betrays you. Then he began to curse and to swear, swear, make an oath again, saying, I do not know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed and Peter remembered the word of Yahushua who said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly and the weeping bitterly was the acknowledgement of the trespass of taking an oath and then denying Yahushua. And then the fact that Yahushua saw him broke his heart. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share that as far as what oath means here um, and understanding um, the violation, the trespass that we're looking at. So. Um, Brother Jadio. Yeah, um, so I found the verse, excellent verses in Proverbs. Um, definitely the us not doing something is just as much sin, you know. Um, uh, you know, but but I think a lot of times we don't, even us praying, remember that, that verse in Samuel where it says, should I sin by ceasing to pray for you? Right. You know, even us not lifting each other up. Or lifting up Yah's people is also against Yah. Absolutely, you know, it's contra contrary to him. But the verses that I found in Ezekiel to compare to connect with yours is Ezekiel chapter three, okay, verse eighteen, not eighteen. So Ezekiel chapter three, verse seventeen down, it says, "Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me." If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, and don't speak to warn the wicked from the wicked his wicked way, in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked and, and he does not turn from his wickedness, or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity, but you will have delivered your being, your soul. You know, and then he says, and again, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits injustice, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you have not warned him. He shall die for his sin, and his righteous deeds that he have done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the righteous person not to sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning and you will have delivered your soul. So this is a, 
a high responsibility. So Leviticus, he's saying, if you saw it, that's Yah, that's Yah allowing you the opportunity to see it and rectify something, help your brother prior to him going all the way. If you see it, you have to say it. If you hear it, you know, it talks about hearing it too. If we hear it, you have to say it, you know, because we're responsible for one another the way that Yah is responsible for us, you know. So um, it, it's, it's definitely sometimes nerve wrenching when when we when we're afraid of of how people are going to respond. But we have to understand Yah says I will require it from you if you knew about it. I'm going to come to you right after, you know, and that's not something that we want to actually, we don't want that. We don't want him to come to us with displeasure because we kept our mouth shut. You know, it's his mouth. <laughs> our mouth is his, our body is his. So we, we, he's saying that this is the responsibility of my people and we need to, we need to take up that responsibility of, of, of bearing one another and lifting each other up and pointing each other to the right direction and not a, not allowing just sin to happen, but trying to prevent it by warning one another, by correcting each other. That's what we, that's what the scriptures is for, is for reproof, for correction, for rebuke, so we can be a perfect person before Yah, you know. So we have to now bear the scriptures and, and use it in that way so we can help each other kind of um, walk uprightly before Yah. Praise you, yeah, absolutely. Um, Brother Will, you had your hand up. Was your question answered? Um, if so, treasured, and then Brother Rick. No, I, I'm, I'm sitting here chuckling. Uh, Brother Jody, L beat me to the verse, man. I was just about to share that with us um, about the uh, Isaiah verse okay. that we just read. Morning. Um, yeah, that, that, just fell right upon me and I just wanted to share that with us but brother Jaddy O got it first so um <laughs> he, hey I'm he just does, chasing this down he, man he does it to me all the time too I try to I try to keep him muted sometimes because man I'm just kidding just kidding but no nah, um praise God praise God brother but there, uh, but there's uh if I if I may share something else that came to my heart here um it's in uh, in addition to that that uh, in Titus three ten, uh, you know when when we do those things and in obedience, you know to try to correct, you know of course in gentleness and according to scripture and love, a brother. Um, uh, Titus three ten also takes me to when when you warn warn a, a divisive person once and then warn them a second time after that have nothing to do with them. So, you know, it comes to a point where how far do you go, you know? Comes to a point where uh, you cut it off, you know? What I understand here. Praise God. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's interesting, you know, I was reading um, out of uh, out of Matthew <clears throat> just a minute ago, we were talking about the situation where Peter, Peter denied Yahushua. And, you know, my son asked me, now this ha has absolutely nothing to do with trespass, um, but it had to do with the spirit of Yah in us. He asked me, he said, he said, did, did Yahuwah tell Yahushua what, what Peter was going to do? I, how did he know the cock was going to crow? And I, and, you know, the spirit of Yah resides in us, resides in, res, resided in Yahushua. When he abides in us and we abide in him, we are given his knowledge. We are given the knowledge that surpasses all understanding. And that is a perfect example of the knowledge of Yah coming forth out of the sun. So um, nothing to do with it, but an opportunity to, to show Yah's word true in that instance. Praise Yah. Um, treasured and then Elder Rick. And then after Rick, Danny. Yeah, I was gonna say. Go ahead, brother. Oh, uh, the verse you just brought out, 
Um, it's amazing uh, on Peter that uh, continue to read Peter. <laughs> I chuckle when I read that a bit because Peter finally tells him, yeah, you know, my heart. It's like, you know, you know, my heart better than I do. It's amazing. You know, it's like to confirm what you're saying, you know, the Messiah, you know, when he sat on the last supper there, uh, he already knew Judas was about to betray him. So that, that all connects, you know, to me. Absolutely. It comes to what we were talking about. Yeah. Absolutely, without question. Um, and we know Peter, you know, most certainly was redeemed of Yah. You know, Peter was crucified. Uh, history says that he was crucified upside down. Um, so he carried it out till death like he promised at the end. So praise Yah for his repentance um, and, his, <clears throat> and his redemption. Um, Sister Treasure, Brother Rick, and then Brother Danny. I have a question about the, um, the stumbling block verse because I have always interpreted a stumbling block to be a negative thing from um, Romans when it says, never to lay a stumbling block in the hindrance of the will of your brother. And then also in the gospel, when it talks about whoever causes his brother to stumble, it is better for a milestone to be hung around their neck. So I wanted to know what was the context of the stumbling block in this verse speaking about? Is it a different like negative and positive stumbling block? Uh, what verse are you speaking of? It was one of the verses you just read. You said um, when you place a, a Yahoo place at a stumbling block in front of somebody and the prophet didn't warn him. Oh, Johnny L. Yeah. Um, the stumbling block is, is like a consequence. Like, let's say he placed the consequence of your actions before you because that's what the stumbling block does. It, it makes you fall. So he's putting something ahead of you like destruction he's saying hey you will be destroyed if you do this and we're supposed to warn people not to get to that point but if that person gets to that point without us warning them and yah's the consequences of their actions from yah happens we are responsible because we saw it coming because he showed he allowed us to see the consequence and we didn't say anything so that's that's what it means by if Yah puts the stumbling block and we didn't warn him before he got to that stumbling block. There's a lot of stumbling blocks we have in scripture where Yah says the consequence, but we are supposed to warn the people to prevent them to get to those consequences. You know, so that's kind of what it means. Okay, thank you. Brother Rick. Yeah, also I think a stumbling block on the aspect of what she was reading in those other verses was uh, for us to be putting a stumbling block or, or become, becoming a stumbling block or, or putting a stumbling block in front of somebody may be something that would lead them uh, off the path, if you will, to stumble to do something that would lead them to sin, you know, something that may tempt them, you know, in a way. It could also be in that same regard. But uh, what I wanted to talk about here is uh, I just found it amazing as I was meditating on these first few verses. But what it's really saying, if we would just listen to what it's telling us and what you guys have already said fills in a lot of these blanks. But then when we put the left tops in here, it really becomes really interesting how we see what he's saying here. And I'm just going to start. I'm just going to go back through this whole thing because we need to hear it again and listen to what is being said where it says, and if a soul sin, so if somebody is sinning, and, and you hear a voice making an oath, and, and you're a witness, whether he has seen or known of it, if he does not utter it, then he shall be uh, bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touches, and now this is one that spoke to me because a lot of people about the clean and unclean animals, this is very specific what it's talking about here. It says, or if a soul touches any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of an unclean cattle or the carcass of an unclean creepy thing, and if it be hidden from him, 
he also shall be unclean and guilty. Then if he touches the uncleanness of a man, whatsoever unclean it might be that the man shall be defiled with, it shall be hid from him. When he knows of it, then he shall be guilty. There's a lot of things we got to think about where we're examining ourselves here. Or if a soul swears or pronounces with his lips to do evil or even to do good, whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with his oath and it be hid from him. That's interesting why he keeps saying that word and it be hidden from him. When he knows of it, then he shall be guilty of one of these. And it shall be when he shall be guilty of one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. It's how he's bringing it all back into our recognition, our understanding, so that we are responsible for confessing that sin that we know we've done at whatever point it's revealed to us. And he has, and here it gets interesting, or he, he shall bring a left tab, which means that covenant symbol of his trespass. So you're breaking his covenant here. So when you shall bring a left tab, your trespass, the breaking of his covenant, you got to offer unto Yahuwah for his sin, which he has sinned. And then that's where he gets into what he's offering. And we've already discussed what those are. But then he goes into seven where he says, and if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring a left tab, his trespasses again, he brings it which he has committed two turtle doves. So he's, he's bringing it so that there can be a, a, a covering over those sins, even if it's a small offering of a turtle doves and stuff. And then he even divides those into something so that everything is covered here, a burnt offering. But how everything that he, we see here outlined is our responsibility, even if it's hidden from us, when we find the, the understanding that it's happened, we have to submit and surrender. That's how, that's how serious this matter is with you who are about repentance. When you recognize it, you, uh-oh, now I see it. I know it. I got to turn away from it. Forgive me. And then now it becomes repulsive to you because now you see the responsibility that you bear. So I just thought that that was very interesting as we're discussing this, how those things stuck out to me. Yeah, no, that's that's good because it, I mean it, it definitely draws attention to to also those things you just discussed and what they mean. You know, um, you know, we 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 go into a full understanding of what clean and unclean animals are when we get to chapter eleven. Um, but clearly, he's speaking, you know, of specific animals. He says livestock. Um, uh, he says beasts, which are larger wild animals, livestock, domesticated animals, creeping things, smaller, smaller wild animals and reptiles and mammals and insects, right? Um, you know, and then he says, unaware of it, meaning you've, you've touched it, the carcasses of it, but you didn't know you touched it. So, and then he says, you know, you, you are, are guilty of speaking um, of, of, of pronouncing an oath, you know, he, he says speaking thoughtlessly, meaning you didn't put thought into the oath. You may have taken the oath emotionally. You know, that's why we never move to do anything based on emotions. You know, you don't take a mar a, a oath of marriage because you feel a certain way. No, it has to be a, a well thought out, intelligent, decision to make that oath, right? So, but if we do, whether we realize it or not, whether we understood it or not, whether we knew it was sin or not, we're still guilty of it, right? Just because you don't know it's sin doesn't mean you're not guilty of sin, you know? But he always reveals what sin is. And like we talked earlier, every time Yahushua had an encounter, he revealed what sin was to the person that he was talking to, right? So no man, as it says in Romans, is without excuse, praise God. So we, we can look at the foundation and understand from the instructions what we are to do um, in, in confession. So 
Um, I'm glad you pointed that out because it caused us to definitely look at what each thing was um, and, and then try to understand, you know, us being guilty of something, whether we realize we did did wrong or not, it being brought to our attention, us then understanding that we need to repent, we need to confess, we need to feel the exact same way that Yah feels about it, give it to him, and then sacrifice, right? We don't sacrifice ignorant. Then what would be the purpose? It would be a cheap sacrifice. It would be uh, a, a sacrifice that wasn't understood by what we're doing. So he always makes sure that we have a clear understanding of us repenting, us realizing first we are guilty and knowing that we need to turn back on the straight and right path. So praise y'all for that. What else we see in the first seven verses? Uh, Prince Yanin. Is that how you pronounce uh, that? Uh, just, yeah, that's, that should be your name. Oh, your name. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. No worries. Go ahead, uh, so is it a coincidence? It's okay. It's okay. So is it a coincidence that in verse 2, he specifically says uh, whether he is unaware of it, he shall be guilty. But from verses three and four, he comes and adds this portion when he becomes aware of it. I mean, is that just a coincidence or is there something more to that? Well, well, sin can only, you can only confess and repent of sin if you become aware of it, right? So, so all of the things um, that are mentioned in scripture uh, when it comes to sin relates to us having, re having revealed or have revelation of that sin, knowing that it's sin, knowing that it's a trespass, knowing that it's a missing of the mark of what Yah's laws and instructions cause, uh, call for us to do and be, and then correcting it by confessing it, sacrifice, or believing in, 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 in Yahushua Messiah on, in, as far as we're concerned, and then we're saved from that sin, you know, and, and now continually confess, as it tells us in John 1, 9, can, can, confess and continue to confess, you know, sin and all unrighteousness, and we will be forgiven of it. Um, he is just in that manner. So um, it's, it's, it's always becoming aware of it. It's just like... Um, and, you know, even sin that we try to hide, you know, because there's sin that we commit and no one else is aware. You know, think of David and Nathan, you know, no one else knew what he was doing except for him. You know, Bathsheba knew some of it, but she didn't know everything he was doing. Nathan brought it to his full attention. He said, against you only, Yah, have I committed this sin, you know, and then he... Uh, spoke to Yah, Yah loved his broken spirit, loved his contrite heart, you know, yet and still there were consequences for that sin, but he was forgiven. So um, we see that throughout scripture, the revelation of sin, because by the law, we know what sin is, right? Shaul tells us that. He knew when he got to Dalai shall not covet, it slayed him. Why? because it lays out everything that a man is capable of and shows that it breaks Yah's instruction, meaning that it's off the mark and needs to be corrected. So all of the sin that we commit, we are brought uh, revelation to so that we can confess. Um, praise Yah. I mean, so, so let's, uh, let's continue. Let's read from verses um, seven, um, and we'll stop at 14, seven to 14. Who wants to take that? Uh, 
I'll take it, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, verse uh, seven. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespasses, which he hath committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto the Lord. I'm reading out of the blue letter. One for a sin offering and the other for a blunt offering. And he shall bring them unto the priests who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first and wring off his head from his neck but shall not dive it asunder. And he shall sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar. And the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar. It is a sin offering. And he shall offer the second for a burnt offering according to the manner. And the priest shall make an atonement for him for his sin which he hath sinned and it shall be given. It shall be forgiven him. But if he not be able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he that sins shall bring for his offering the tenth part of a of an I can't pronounce that word. F Epha? Epha. Epha of fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense therefore, for it is a sin offering. Then shall he bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it, even a memorial therefore, and burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto Yah. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin that he had sinned in one of these, and it shall be forgiven him. And the remnant shall be the priests as a meat offering. And the Lord spoke, spake unto you can Moses. Stop. You can saying, stop. Yeah, that's why I was gonna stop. Yeah, yeah, praise God. Praise God. Anything you want to pull out or stands out to you there? Um, I, I would have to go over this, brother, because there is a lot going on here. Okay. No problem. So so we see immediately once um uh Yao gives provision for the 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 person that cannot. Yeah, I guess provision for the person that cannot um, afford to, to, to give of the flock, right? If afford, they can't afford to give um, out of the lamb, he, he makes provision and he, and he allows him to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. And the reason um, that he couldn't uh, that he brought two because because they couldn't be split and separated in two. One had to be for the sin offering with the blood. The other was to be burned on the altar. Um, just as the fat and the inner parts of the of the larger animals were. So with the birds, you had to have two. So provision is made. And then he says, if, if you don't have the ability to provide a pigeon, or two pigeons and or, or or two turtle doves, then you then you can bring you know uh, one tenth of a, of an ephah, which was approximately um, two quarts of grain. But with the as as with the grain or the meat offering um, that we read previously, you were not allowed to add um, anything to it, the frankincense uh, uh, or, or or the you know, the frankincense to it, um, providing a savor because it was a sin offering. Um, this was a purification and it had to be pure flour, nothing else mixed in. So um, we see clearly 
um, that provision for all is made for the sin that is committed. Um, and just like 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us of sin and all unrighteousness and the rest shall be for the priest as a grain offering. So we see clearly spelled out for us what was to happen if a man was to sin in this way um, in keeping an oath, trespass an oath, trespass in touching uh, a carcass, uh, trespass in, 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 in having um, not thoughtfully considered uh, the oath that he was taking. Uh, whether he did it aware <laughs> or unaware, brought to his attention, realizing it was sin, this is what was required um, of that man uh, for the forgiveness and the atonement of sin. Anyone else want to add anything in that in that particular portion? Just a quick question, brother. Sure. Um, in verse 7 and verse 8, um, some of the words, turtle doves, is that uh, meaning regular doves? A do yeah, dove. I think they're, okay. they're, they're the turtle doves, I think, are, are smaller. I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm no aficionado on birds, but um, they were, you know, less expensive. Uh, the turtle doves, the doves. And of course, the pigeons, which were very common. And verse eight, asunder. What does that mean? And what? Verse eight, right at the end, where it says, but shall not divide it asunder. Oh, so, so they should not be divided completely. In other words, remember I said it should not be cut in two? That's what it's speaking of, not to completely divide it in two. You cut it open, but don't separate the two parts. Keep it as one part. That's why they had two. They use one for the sin, for the blood, and one for the burnt offering. So that's what that means. Praise you. You good, Will? All right, brother, um, brother Yanene. So something popped up from the commentaries here. Let me just take us back in verse four. In those four words, talks of swearing thoughtlessly, impulsively, right? And we see the case in Mark chapter six, verses 23 where Herod speaks impulsively when giving this oath to his daughter, and then he comes and realizes, oh, I have to live up to this oath. So that's just an example. But I have a question concerning verses 9. Uh, what's the significance of the different locations? Like when it says uh, some of the blood of the sin offering is uh, is, is to be poured on the side of the altar as compared and the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. What's the significance of these different locations in that particular altar setting? Well, this if is perhaps this you is, have that revelation. This was the this was the um, instruction given um, throughout uh, scripture for um, the way that the blood was supposed to be distributed. Um, the word sprinkle there actually means to splash, uh, to splash blood um, of the sin offering on the side of the altar. The rest of the blood drained into the base of the altar as, as customary for sin offering. If we go back to um, the beginning, uh, when we looked at uh, the way that the animal was cut, um, the way that the blood was taken out, the way that the blood was splashed, and the way that the blood, it says in verse five of, uh, verse four of chapter one, it says, to make atonement for him, he shall kill the bull 
before Yahuwah, and the priest Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood all around the altar that it is in, <clears throat> excuse me, all around the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest shall put fire on the altar and lay wood in order of the fire. Then the priest Aaron's son shall lay the parts, the head, the fat in order of the wood that is in the fire upon the altar. He shall wash his entrails. That's where we were talking about the in, the innermost parts of the animal uh, signified by the turtle doves. The turtle doves and the pigeons were to be split, but not cut into pieces like the larger animals were. The one part was taken for the blood for the basin and for the sides of the altar. The other bird was taken and used as the burn offering the same way the fat um, and the entrails, the innermost parts of the animal burnt as a sacrifice to Yahuwah. So it's just following the tradition and the instruction of Yah um, as given here. Um, if anyone else wants to speak on that. Praise Yah, praise Yah. All right. Um, any more questions on that section? All right, let's pick up in um, verse 14. Verse 14, um, I'll go ahead and read. It says, uh, <clears throat> Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, if a person commits a trespass and sins unintentionally in regard to the holy things of Yahuwah, then he shall bring to Yahuwah as his trespass offering a ram without blemish from the flocks with your valuation in shekels of silver according to the shekel of the sanctuary as a trespass offering. And he shall make restitution for the harm that he has done in regard to the holy thing and shall add one fifth to it and give it to the priest. So the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering and it shall be forgiven him. If a person sins and commits any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of Yahuwah, though he does not know it, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity. And he shall bring to the priest a ram without blemish, blemish from the flock with valuation as a trespass offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him regarding his ignorance in which he erred and did not know it, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He has certainly trespassed against Yahuwah. Let's discuss, um, what do we see here? Brother Will. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, in the previous section that we were reading, um, you actually brought up the point about when when we sin, that there is still consequences. So verse fifteen reminded me of what was discussed in the previous section, where it says if a soul commits a trespass, sins to ignorance, the holy things of Yah, then he shall bring all these things that it describes following in that verse. So there's still a consequence there for the sin. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think I think here is, is where we see um, the, the whole idea being introduced um, concerning the restitution. Let me, let me mute you, brother. <clears throat> this whole idea of restitution um, when it comes to uh, what the offering should be, 
um, because we see um, it says the holy things of Yahuwah. Um, and, and these will be the separated um, <clears throat> the, the 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 artifacts and the and the and the uh, furnishings, the utensils, um, the sacrificial food we reserved for the priest, the tithes and other things. These are the things, the holy things that are being spoken of, and that's why you see the restitution comes with the actual sacrifice. So the restitution here. Evaluation of the thing that was defiled or the thing that was trespassed against or the thing that was stolen, your valuation of shekels of silver according to the shekel of the sanctuary. So, according to what it was worth as a trespass offering and what would be made for restitution, then in regard to that, one fifth would be added. So, you can't just I can't take your bike, uh, Will. Keep it for three months. Bring it back with no tires in the handlebars and say, sorry, man, I, I took the bike because I needed it. I, I parked it in this place, you know, in downtown Miami, and they just, they stripped it, you know. But here's your bike, uh, and I'm sorry. <laughs> that's That's not asking for forgiveness you know asking for forgiveness is saying I'm, I'm i'm sorry for what i've done um in lieu of what i took and, and the fact that your bike was was uh, uh stolen or or, or 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 vandalized i can't return your bike as is so here's a brand new bike right here's one for your wife and here's one for your daughter too okay and i brought you a meal um, and, and if you forgive me, I'll eat with you. If not, you know, y'all, y'all go ahead on and enjoy the meal. You see what I'm saying? That's restitution. That's giving above and beyond to show that you are asking for forgiveness and that you know what you did was wrong. And we have to make sure that we see those things when it comes to sin against our fellow man specifically in taking or damaging something that, that is of them, because we're going to talk about in the next couple of verses. But ultimately, when we sin against our fellow man, we sin against Yah also, right? So we have to be mindful of these things uh, when, we, when, we, when we read scripture and try to understand what Yah is telling us through these, through these passages. What else do we see? Anyone? Come on, come on, where's all my scholars at? You guys are quiet today. Prince Yanene. What you got, brother? So it's a beautiful parallel of verse 17. Verse 17, we can head to Luke chapter 12. Uh, Luke chapter 12, let me start. So it talks, verse 17 talks of uh, the person who commits a, a, a guilt or who commits sin and he's not aware of it, but he shall be guilty and shall receive punishment, right? So this is what Yahushua had to say concerning the sin. From verse 45, Luke 12, from verse 45, but if that servant says in his heart, my master is taking his time in coming, and begins to beat the servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and yet did not get ready or act in accord with his will, will be beaten with many lashes of the whip. But the one who did not know it and did these things worthy of a beating will receive only a few lashes from 
everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required, and to whom they entrusted much of him, they will ask all the more. And so uh, reading that, it's just hit me that it's a greater responsibility on us who claim we follow the Torah and who claim we know the Torah. It's a greater burden and a responsibility because if Yah has revealed these things unto us, then it's, uh, well, we really need to take it seriously just to put it in few words, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. To, to have knowledge of what sin is and to do it anyway, you know, um, is not a good thing. And we have <clears throat> this doctrine that says that that's okay, that he's faithful and justice to forgive us and we continue to go on in sin. You know, Jadiel read this morning the passage in Hebrews, if we continue to sin after we have knowledge of sin, there is no sacrifice for it. Yahushua already died for the sin <laughs> that we committed. We now know what that sin is, meaning that every sin now that we committed after that fact, after coming to the knowledge that he died for our sin, we have to answer for it. You know, we continue to confess like First John 1, 1 says, but we don't continue to live a life of habitual sin, knowing what Torah tells us. And that doctrine is going to lead people to perish, you know, so we have to get away from that. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I wanted to read a, a little passage um, out of Ezra that talks about confession, because we talked about confession being uh, the, the most important component in repentance, um, once you understand the violation that you have against Torah, right? That you have committed against Torah. Well, in Ezra 7.10, um, it came to the knowledge of Israel um, that they had been committing sin by um, taking pagan wives, right? So listen to what it says here. It says, in verse two of Ezra 10, it says, and Shekaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, spoke up and said to Ezra, we have trespassed against our Elohim and have taken pagan wives from the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Now, therefore, let us make covenant with our Elohim to put away all these wives and those who have been born to them according to the advice of my master and those who tremble at the commandment of our Elohim. Um, and let it be done according to the law. Arise for this matter is your responsibility. We also are with you. Be, good, be of good courage and do it. And jumping down to verse 18, it says, and among the sons of the priest who had taken pagan wives, the following were found of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Zodak, or, or Zozadak, Jozadak, and his brothers, Messiah, or Messiah, Eliezer, Jarib, and Giladad, and they have their promise that they would put away, and they gave their promise, sorry, that they would put away their wives and being guilty, they presented a ram of the flocks as their trespass offering. So we see this being carried out in the same way that Yah instructed once the trespass was brought to the forefront of the mind of those committing it. So. Um, this is the pattern. This is what Yah commands. This is what we must do. So I just wanted to kind of bring an example of that. Um, we're going to go into chapter six, um, the first seven verses, because it continues the thought that we have here of this restitution 
now we're going to start to talk about taking something from a neighbor, taking something from your fellow uh, um, countrymen, taking something from someone that is close to you. Um, and this also applies uh, to what we've been reading. I'll go ahead and read and then we'll discuss. Um, verse uh, one of chapter six says this, it says, and Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, if a person sins and commits a trespass against Yahuwah, first by lying to his neighbor about what was delivered to him for safekeeping and about a pledge or about a robbery, or if he has ex extorted from his neighbor, or if he has found what was lost and lies concerning it and swears falsely in any one of these things that a man may do it in which he sins, then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore what he has stolen or the thing which, had, which he has extorted or what was delivered to him for safekeeping or the lost thing which he found or all about which he has sworn falsely, he shall restore its full value, add one fifth more to it and give it to whomever it belongs. And the day of his trespass offering and all he shall bring his, in all, he shall bring his trespass offering to Yahuwah, a ram without blemish from the flock with your valuation and a trespass offering to the priest. So the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahuwah and he shall be forgiven for any one of these things that he may have done in which he trespasses. So we see clearly here, this is what J.B was talking about earlier today in that, you know, you have to make restitution for those things that you steal, take away from damage, you know, and, and what blows my mind about this passage is that Yahuwah knows exactly every angle that we would come from, right? He says robbery or safekeeping, extortion, a pledge, a lie, uh, something was lost and we lied about it, concerning it, swears falsely. Any one of these things that a man may do in which he sins. So all of it is entailed. Every angle, every view, every lie, every steal, every cheat is covered here. And then what our direction is or our instruction is afterwards. And I like how um, the uh, brother... I uh, forgot his name, uh, but he brought it out earlier. Um, he read a passage out of Luke about uh, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and how he wanted to restore anything that he stole, um, recognizing um, that there were past things that he had done that he wanted to repay. Um, but before I continue, I wanted to see if anyone else had to say anything about those verses. guys are quiet today, man. Y'all are really quiet today. Brother Will. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I, I don't want you alone there, bro. So I got it. I, I got it. Appreciate that. So, yeah, yeah. So so basically, um, uh, besides the sin offerings that continue uh, with the education here, the uh, message that I've seen is very powerful as to how we are to conduct ourselves around our neighbors, even in today's day and age, we can transpose that over to our communities and how we can be a voice and be used by the most high as a tool to, of expression of what we believe in uh, through our conduct, observing these things. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, <clears throat> this specifically in this passage is talking about those in the nation, those that we lived with, those that all we all had the same um, 
process of thought, process of understanding, process of worship, process of serving Yah. The, this is what it's talking about as far as the nation, but ultimately absolutely pours into what we do in our own community. We, we follow Yah. So if I see somebody do something or commit something and I keep my mouth shut, it's just as if I helped it because I didn't allow for due process to come by saying what I saw, you know? If I, you know, JP used the, 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 or somebody used the analogy earlier by borrowing somebody's hammer, you know, and banging it all up and giving it back to them the same way if, if they left it over your house. Nah, get them a hammer, get them a tool belt, you know, and get them a couple screwdrivers to go with it and some oil, you know, to keep them clean, you know. So we have to be mindful of the things that we do um, even now in our community, but specifically you know, towards our brothers and sisters that we that we share the same faith with. Um, but all of that applies. Um, June, go ahead. Uh, this may be out of context, but when you were speaking, I was thinking about sometimes that's dangerous to uh, offer testimony about what someone else did. Like, I guess I'm remembering all of those uh like like mob mobs and gangs they when they commit crime and they have witnesses like don't they normally try to kill them or something like that you know but you're saying yeah wants us to find courage and be brave and re report anything we may see even if it's like accidental and it uh well yeah yeah i mean i think i think Ultimately, you know, this particular passage is speaking about committing these things against people in our community. But um, I think, you know, you know, there, that's, you know, that's something maybe we should talk about because, and I, and I know you remember this, um, uh, I was, I was, uh, I had a friend of mine that was a lawyer that uh, came to me and wanted me to do a story on you know, I was a journalist at the time for a, a, a national newspaper, and they wanted me to do this story on this, this 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 guy. And everyone, now I didn't know the people personally, I didn't witness anything, you know, but they wanted me to do this story. And everybody that was involved in the case had been killed and was about to be killed. Like the main witness of the case was about, was about hadn't been killed yet, but got killed like, three weeks later, you know? And I was like, no, nah, bro, I don't write crime stories. <laughs> and, and, and I didn't, you know, I was a journalist, but, I, but at that time, you know, I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm good. <laughs> I have nothing to do with this, you know? Um, and, and that's not what this passage is necessarily talking about, but, you know, I think, that wisdom definitely has to entail. If we witness a crime though, someone is killed, I think that is our we are obligated to, to say something in the form of justice. You know, if we don't, you know, we're, 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 we're not helping justice come to fruition, you know? So, you know, and trust that God will protect us, you know, bottom line. Um, I don't think there's any argument about that. Obviously, there is, you know, fear of what can happen, but this is what y'all told us to do. Praise y'all. Um, Brother Danny and then um, Sister Robbie. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, Brother uh, Rod. I think let's... Uh, What's the issue going on here, really, uh, as far as I'm concerned here, is as being truthful in, in matters of witness and making swear uh, or making an oath. I think the issue here is being truthful. And I'd like to, I'd like to also read Matthew chapter 5. Uh, this was I was supposed getting to, be, to that. <laughs> yeah, this was supposed to be in chapter 5. Five of Leviticus a while ago, but yeah, uh, I was not 
you know, I wasn't on not being called there. But anyway, Matthew 5, verse 34. Okay. 5, 34, it says here, But I say to you, do not swear falsely at all, neither by the Shamaim, because it is Yahuwah's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is his city, the great sovereign. Nor swear by your head, because you are not able to make one hair white or black. Verse 37. But let your word yes be yes, and your no be no. And what goes on beyond this is from wicked one. So, I think let's like to affirm what has been discussed here. That uh, being a witness or making an oath or whatever for that matter. We just have to be truthful. Let yes. be yes, be yes. Let be no, be no. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. When you said Matthew five, I thought you were going to read another passage because relating because that that that's a good one. What you just read. Um, what I was going to read in, as it pertained to the, this idea that Yahuwah was saying, make restitution first, then give your sacrifice to me is the same thing Yahushua says in Matthew 5, but verses 23 and 24, I see you, Robbie, I'm coming to you next, um, where he says this. He says, um, Oh, yeah. <laughs> he says, That's very good. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and, and, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, go your way, First reconcile with your brother, then come and offer your gift. Gives yes. the exact order in which we are to, to present ourselves to Yah. I can't present myself to Yah, Danny, and you're upset with me because I still got your lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> from from last summer. Hmm. Right? That, 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 that I broke and didn't tell you about. Now you need it. And I'm coming to the altar to give a gift, but me and you aren't cool, you know? No, I have to go to you. When I go to the altar, I have to be clean, spotless, rinsed. Of any sin against you first, then present to Yah. And, and that's exactly the order in which Yahushua gives our instruction. Um, so confirming what it says in Torah, praise Yah, he is. The living, yeah. living word. Hallelujah. I have, I have uh, we ought to be excited right about now. that. You know, when we can see, you know, Torah confirmed through the words of Yahushua. You know, I ought to hear some shouting. I ought to hear some sings, songs and poems coming up. Some some trumpet blasts. I mean, you know, I'm being yeah. silly, but you, but you guys know what I'm talking yeah. about. This is, when we see things revealed this way, we ought to be excited about what Yah's word, and it's okay to be excited um, for the revelation of his truth, you know, in our lives as we learn more and more about him, Sister Robbie. I still have one concern, uh, Brother, Brother Rod, if okay. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, my, my uh, not concern really, but it's really an appreciation because uh, reading Leviticus 5 and 6, uh, seeing what is being required to the offender uh you know offering all of those like dub and and so all of those uh, levitical practices uh it really helped me appreciate so much what yahushua has done in the, in in, the, in when he was hung because if we do it in our time today you know uh, we cannot go to the temple in jerusalem uh so it's no, it's very hard for us to get some animals and offer it, you know, yearly. But because of what Yahushua has done, you know, he, he did it once and for all. So all the more, it really give us more, you know, appreciation and give more value to what Yahushua has done for us. So praise Yah for his, his lamb, perfect lamb sacrifice for all of us. Praise Yah. That, that's, um, that's beautiful, man. You know, when we 
when we see, when we read Torah, you know, and 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 and, and the words of Yahushua, the words of the prophets, the words of the disciples, the letters, you know, the writings, when they 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 get illuminated. You know, when we see the foundation of them, when we make the connections and cross-references, and then we see what our Savior did for us, um, not only is mind-boggling, but it also tears the heart apart, you know, yeah. for us ever falling short, you know. And it should it should it should strengthen us and compel us to push forward and not seek to sin in any way. You know, you know we can and we can fall into the trap of of making light of sin. You know, sometimes we joke about it. Sometimes we make fun of it you know i know i'm guilty of that you know and i think sometimes things are funny because they happen in a funny way but we have to remember um that it's still sin we have to remember that somebody still needs to be prayed for for that deliverance from that particular vice you know and not to take it so lightly as to as for sin to lose um, its detriment that it has to us. Sin leads to death, period, right? So we gotta be mindful of that in every way. Praise sister God. Robbie's been very patient. Thank you, my sister. The floor is yours. I'm just taking it I'm just taking it all in. It's such a good discussion. And I appreciate your story that you share when you were a journalist. Wow, what a situation that was. You made the right decision. That was wise not to write on that story. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm just thinking like when I look at all of this, what we're discussing in Leviticus chapter five and six, it gives me a Pacific visual of Yahuwah as a lawgiver. Like he covers all human interactions of communal people. And these were his set apart people, Yasharel, and he's setting up a governmental administration for them to follow, which will be also implement, implemented in his kingdom to come. So in the meantime, we're not in a community of Yasharel. Like for example, there's lots of gangs, notorious gangs. If I were to witness a murder, and everybody's been killed associated with that murder, I would say, okay, do you have a witness protection program? Yes, they do have, have, have witness protection programs. I go, you got room, you gonna put me in there? So if they says yes, then you know I would uh, be a witness. But even with that, it's gonna take courage. It's gonna take trust in Yahuwah because sometimes they track you down. Those gangs and uh, different syndicates and they'll find you while you're in a witness pr protection program. You know, maybe I've been watching too much Lifetime stories in the past, but, you know, yeah, you just uh, have to really trust in Yahuwah if you were in that kind of situation and know that if you do lose your life, you will find it. He will uh, resurrect you. You know, if you saw murder and you were on a witness protection program and they still found you anyway, that you would get everlasting life from Yahuwah. So I'm talking about now, but to live it out, that's going to be a different thing. Yeah, I'm no, never no. in that situation. Yeah, yeah. I pray that I pray that none of us are in that situation to have to deal with that. But you're absolutely right. You know, we could talk a big game today. You know, we're sitting here holding the word, talking about it. But you know, when it when it comes down to it, will we stand flat footed and and serve Yah? Will we honor um, His word? Will we honor His statutes? Will we be truthful in all testimony after witnessing something? Right. So, praise Yah. Um, so, um, the rest of chapter six is really a review. We've already gone through in detail the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the sin offering. So what, what I want to do 
um, because we don't have a lot of time. I'll just read through because what's happening here in in the rest of verse uh, chapter six is the view, the same view what we read, but from the priest standpoint. This is instruction instructions to the priest, Aaron and his sons. Um, but we've already went through it in detail, so I'm just going to read through. If you guys don't mind, you okay with that? Praise Yah, praise Yah. So I'll read, <clears throat> um, starting in verse 8, um, the law of the burnt offering. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, command Aaron and his son, saying, this is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be on the earth upon the altar all night until morning, and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen trousers. He shall put on his body and take up the ashes of the burnt offering, which the fire has consumed, on the altar, and he shall put them beside, <clears throat> excuse me, the altar. Verse 11, then he shall take off his garments, put on other garments, and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. And the fire of, on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the pieces offerings, excuse me, the fat of the peace offering. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. Verse 14, this is the law of the grain offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it on the altar before Yahuwah, he shall take from it his handful of, of the flying flour of the grain offering with its oil and all the frankincense. Remember the oil and frankincense weren't added to the grain of the sin offering. Remember those that couldn't afford the bulls, the goats, the birds, they would give a grain offering of flying flour, but it did not have the frankincense. Here we see this grain offering here does have oil, frankincense, which is on the grain offering. And so burn it on the altar for a sweet aroma as a memorial to Yahuwah. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 16. And the remainder of it, Aaron and his son shall eat with unleavened bread. It shall be eaten in a holy place in the court of the tabernacle of meeting, they shall eat it. It shall not be baked with leaven. I have given it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, like the sin offering and the trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron may eat it. It shall be a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah. Everyone who touches them must be holy. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, this is the offering of Aaron and his sons, which shall, be off, which shall offer to Yahuwah beginning on the day when he is anointed. One tenth of an ephah, of flour, remember that's two quarts of fine flour, as a daily grain offering, half of it in the morning and half of it at night. It shall be made in a pan with oil. When it is mixed, you shall bring it in. The baked pieces of the grain offering you shall offer for a sweet aroma to Yahuwah. The priests from among his sons who is anointed in his place shall offer it. It is a statute forever to Yahuwah. It shall be wholly burned. That means burned entirely, not holy, but wholly burned. All of it shall be burned. For every grain offering for the priest shall be wholly burned. It shall not be eaten. 
Verse 24, also Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, speak to Aaron and to his son saying, this is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, the sin offering shall be killed before Yahuwah. It is most, it is most holy. The priest who offers it for sin shall eat. In a holy shall eat it in a holy place, it shall be eaten in the court of the tabernacle of meeting. Everyone who touches its flesh must be holy. And when its blood is sprinkled on any garment, you shall wash that on which it was sprinkled in a holy place. But the earthen vessel in which it was boiled shall be broken. For if it is boiled in a bronze pot, it shall be both scorched or scored and rinsed with water. All the males among the priests may eat it. It is most holy, but no sin offering from which any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle of meeting to make atonement in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burned in the fire. And um, next week, we'll kind of get into uh, we'll get into the law of uh, trespass offering, the law of the peace offering, the fat and the blood, and the portion for Aaron and his sons. Um, but we're going to stop there for today. ending at uh, the end of chapter six. So we'll pick up in chapter seven uh, next week. So praise Yah. And uh, this concludes chapters five and six of Leviticus. Um, praise Yah. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Akuti, and Rohim. Thank you so much for viewing this video. We hope it was helpful to your walk in the truth. Remember to always search the scriptures on your own, to study Abba's word and show yourself approved according to 2 Timothy 2.15. We invite you to study with us. To join us in a live study, just go to our website at assemblyofyahuwah.com and click the Join Us tab. We have something available Wednesday through Saturday of every week. If you've been Baruch or blessed by this video today or any other study, we encourage you to go to the giving tab on our website. Our elders all have their own ways of income, so none of the giving or proceeds go to them. Instead, it goes to biblical assembly needs. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any new videos. We sincerely pray that Abba continues to direct your path as you acknowledge Him in all your ways. Much avaha and again shalom.